Three years ago, I asked you to mark 2015 as the best year ever, because it was the year that the Welcome to Nightville novel was being released. I feel hesitant saying the same thing about this year, but I am really, really excited to finally be able to tell you about the second Welcome to Nightville novel, called It Devours which comes out this October and is available for pre-sale right now. I am so proud of It Devours. It is a thriller about Carlos and his scientists investigating a strange new religion in town, the joyous congregation of the Smiling God, and what exactly their Smiling God has to do with powerful movement detected in the desert, and with well-known members of the community disappearing overnight. It's about the relationship between science and religion, not in a simple pro-con way, but exploring the complex conversation and negotiation between the two different ways of looking at the world. It's also a page-turning mystery with plot twists and double crosses, a giant monster fight, and even some kissing and stuff. We are unveiling today the truly stunning cover design by Rob Wilson, so if nothing else, go check out my favorite book cover I've seen in years, and then check out the book inside. It comes out October 17th in hardcover ebook and audiobook, and is available for pre-sale as of this very moment. You don't need to be caught up on the podcast or have read the first novel to enjoy It Devours. We've been living with this story for a long time now, and I can't wait for all of you to be able to experience it too. Go to welcometonightville.com and click on books to see the cover and get info on how to pre-order. There will be some book events this fall, and we'll have info on that when info exists. But in the meantime, go check out that cover on our books page at welcometonightville.com. It Devours is my favorite Night Vale thing we've ever written, and I'm so happy to get to share it with all of you. And hey, I love you. I know you are, but what am I? What am I? What am I? What am I? Welcome to Night Vale. start today with something happy. In his speech yesterday honoring the life of old woman Josie, Larry Leroy, out on the edge of town and Josie's closest neighbor, told a story about his pickup breaking down a few years ago. Josie had stopped on the roadside to help him push the old Chevy the mile or so to his house. In the last few hundred feet, the truck picked up momentum on the sloped road, and it rolled out of their control into a large cactus. They heard a surprised yelp and saw Telly the barber, wide-eyed and sweating, holding a pair of shears. Josie and Larry laughed and laughed. Even the surprised Telly laughed. Larry then asked Telly why he was cutting that cactus's hair. Telly gulped and ran away, still laughing and sweating profusely. Larry told the gathered mourners that he didn't have many friends in town, but old woman Josie was always kind to him, always a smile, always happy to help, always good for a giggle when she caught Telly giving cacti haircuts. The services were beautiful, you know that. You were all there. We were all there. I know I said gathered mourners, but in a way, we were gathered celebrants, extolling the great life of a great woman, now gone. Today is the scattering of her ashes, and the city is working to fulfill Josie's wishes. They are joined in this endeavor by several beings claiming to be angels. And the city is trying to ignore the angel's request to help because it is illegal to acknowledge the existence of angels. So, we'll see how this goes. The dozens of five-headed dragons who came to our world after the botched yet partially successful execution of fellow dragon Hiram McDaniels are still in town. 
Hiram's sister, Hadassah, had promised vengeance for the wrongful murder of Hiram's violet head. But after several weeks of setting fire to local businesses and devouring a few of the more muscular human citizens, the dragons have gone mostly silent. Their aggressions now limited to some blatant jaywalking and loitering. There has been one report of an unidentified five-headed dragon hurling a crumpled fresca can basketball style at a trash bin, missing the trash bin wildly, and then picking the soda can up and gently tossing it into the bin, only to have it clumsily fall out and back onto the ground. Onlookers were shocked to see that the dragon did not even attempt a third putback, and the can is still lying on the ground this very moment. The can is still on the ground. Mayor Cardinal has called on the sheriff for stricter enforcement of minor offenses so they do not escalate into more sinister crimes. Plus, she added, if we do not clean litter from our curbs, the street cleaners might show up, and we simply cannot afford the loss of innocent lives that would cause. More on this as it develops. Josie's daughter, Alondra Ortiz, who came to town last year to be with her ailing mother until Josie passed away, is now sorting through Josie's estate and documents. Alondra said she found no will in Josie's files, only a piece of paper that said, It all belongs to the angels. But Alondra noted the handwriting was written shakily in thick magic marker, and every word but it and the was misspelled. She believes the beings who claim to be angels wrote this, not her mother. The angels responded, Nah-uh, and then nervously wiped their brows with clearly ink-stained hands. Alondra hired an estate lawyer to help sort out liquidation of her mother's assets. Alondra said she just wants to be done with all this and go back home. When asked where home was, Alondra responded, I don't remember. Why can't I remember? That's not important. I mean, it's super important, but not to this discussion. Oh God, what is wrong with me? With this town? A single engine plane then flew across the horizon behind her, trailing a banner that read, Oh, I found some teeth. Listeners, some of you have asked about our intern, Kareem. He's been at the station for so long, about 16 months, much longer than any other intern in recent memory. Well, I'm sorry to report he is no longer with us. He was a good intern, and he will be missed. Kareem changed majors from communications to earth sciences and no longer needs this radio internship. He is taking classes with Professor Simone Rigado at Nightvale Community College. Simone is not actually employed by NVCC, and in one of Kareem's last journalistic endeavors here at the station, he even found a copy of her death certificate, dated 1983. Although she does not show any signs of being a ghost. But apparently, her knowledge of Earth sciences intrigued Kareem enough that he wanted to change career trajectories. Kareem told me on his last day, which was today, like five minutes before I started my broadcast is when I found out about this, he told me Simone knows what happened to Night Vale, why Kareem's family doesn't know him anymore, and why he can't find Mitchelgen or whatever his home state is on a map. I'm just happy Kareem is pursuing his dreams, even if he's going to lose all those journalism credits... And today's filing will have to be done by an overworked radio host before he gets to go home to his husband. Gonna be a long path to that degree, Kareem. I'm sure you'll do great. Listeners, I'd like to caution you away from driving near downtown. Road crews have shut down all streets in all directions, as a construction team is building a series of elaborate roller coasters and amusement park rides many of which do dives and loops around, under, and through the surrounding buildings and even roads. It's complete gridlock all over downtown, with cars unable to drive into or out of the jam. 
On the plus side, there's a pretty cool looking Aquaman ride that does a double twisting loop through a large pool of water that is elevated more than 50 feet off the ground. Mayor Cardinal is on the scene arguing with the construction team about their lack of development permits. The construction crew, who are all tall, glowing beings with wings, showed the mayor a piece of paper that said, This is all totally fine. Josie said we can build this. Okay? Signed, City. Written in a magic marker and nearly every word misspelled. Alondra Ortiz's lawyer, Emilio Tavares, filed an injunction to halt the work, saying that the funds used toward the construction of these roller coasters were part of Josie's estate and were being misappropriated by the so-called angels. There is no documentation showing Josie wished her money to be spent this way, Tavares explained. The construction team then mumbled, A dummy says what? And Tavares said, What? And they all laughed including the mayor, who then added, Yeah, but yeah, seriously, you need building permits, even if you are fulfilling the elaborate wishes of the deceased. We'll have more on this soon, but first, a quick break. Hi, this is Cecil. Leave a message. Hello, Cecil? It's Steve. Okay, I'm not sure if you're there or not. Last few times I called, you said to leave a message at the tone, and then halfway into my message, you interrupted me and said, Ha ha, Steve. You fell for it again. So I'm just making sure you're actually there this time. I have something I wanted to tell you so you could report it on your show. Are you there, Cecil? I don't want to fall for your trick again. Okay. Well, I was getting some coffee over at the Spiky Hammer, and I held the door for this woman I didn't recognize. She just stared at me, didn't say thank you or anything. I mean, I don't hold doors for approval, it's just a nice thing to do. But she efforted to not thank me, you know? And then when I stood in line, she stood right next to me, her face just inches from mine, staring at me. And I tried not to look, it's not nice to stare. She didn't say anything for the longest time, but right as I placed my order, a large Gravlax macchiato with quad shot and whipped cream, she started whispering loudly in my ear. I couldn't understand what she was saying, and it made it difficult to talk to the barista. And then, when I turned to ask her, politely, if she wanted me to get her something, she was gone. Oh, I wish I could remember what the woman said. Oh gosh, it was something like... Hmm. That woman from Italy has come back to town. Nothing can stop her from tearing it down. She lives for your screams, makes meals of your tears. She revels in chaos and deals in your fears. We all huddle and hide from the pain yet to come. Huddle hidden with loved ones, perhaps she'll spare some. She brings the torture, the trouble, the stress, so... Can you order for her a double espresso? Well, I don't remember what she said. If I think of it, I'll call you back. Anyway, sorry I missed you, Cecil. I'm here, Steve. You totally fell for it. Oh. Oh, 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 oh you got me. Basic stuff, Steve. Sure is. Wow, you got me good. <laughs> oh, I tease you because I love you, Steve. Oh, Cecil. I love you too, big brother. Just kidding. I'm not here. Please leave your message after the tone. Hello? Cecil, I'm not sure what just happened. I guess I'll try again later. Sorry for the interruption. It looks like I got a voicemail. Oh, it's from Steve Carlsberg. Well, never mind. There's breaking news right now. Stay far away from downtown, listeners. The traffic jam caused by the halted construction project is in great danger. The cars are honking noisily. People are abandoning their vehicles, but the sheriff is asking everyone to seek immediate shelter. Several dragons are converging on the scene. The dragons have everyone in the congested area completely surrounded. They are walking, no, stomping toward the helpless citizens trapped in traffic. Nightvale, do not go out on the roads. The dragons have us exactly where they want us. Oh, what a disastrous trap. Be safe. 
And as I try to find out more on what's happening in downtown, please hear this important weather report. Am I qualified, qualified? Am I qualified, qualified? Am I qualified, qualified? I'm staring into his eyes and he's the most beautiful person I've ever met. Then my burdens arrive, they're chilling my vibe, burning inside like a cigarette. Figured that he will not want to be intimate. I tell him sometimes I'm not into men. He says, that's okay, you're wonderful like a bouquet. And then we climb into bed. We hug and we kiss a lot, and it hits the spot. I tell him I love him. He tell me he love me. I tell him to get in my tummy. I'm yelling, I'm coming. But it's more than the sex. He claims that I'm great, that I'm really amazing. But a couple more days in, I don't know. Will he still say the same thing? Am I qualified? Qualified. Am I qualified? Qualified. Hell if I go. But I'm terrified, yo. Will uncover my soul? And I'll run inside and I wanna hide. Wonder what did I do? Am I qualified? Qualified. Am I qualified? Qualified. Hell if I Qualified, check my qualifiers like I'm open mic, but I'm hella tired. In terms of my music, things seem to be going okay, but I'm not really sure. Like, what if I lose it? How will I know what I'm making is not some manure? I lock myself in, peeking under the doors. Yes, I will admit that it's tough to endure. The feeling I might hit the ceiling, revealing that it won't be long till the cracks start appearing. I'm filling the holes like the backs of an earring till slowly it grows. And the gaps is apparent. My fans will stage a big coup d'etat. They're chanting, they're yelling, oh, you a flop. And they chew me out like I'm food for thought. I'm just waiting for the other shoe to drop. Am I qualified? Qualified. Am I qualified? But if the answer is yes, then if they're impressed, then why would I stress? Cause questioning keeps me depressed, reaching the deep in the mess. Cause weak is the flesh, but flesh is what's here though. My soul's an invisible hero. When I need something real in my ear holes, cause my positive feelings is zero. And I feel like I'm 300 years old. Got the weird cold and the fear folds. Speaking different dimensions, I'm bigger than what I get paid though. If the beer's cold, then I'm drinking it cause it lets me hold. When I'm thinking that different people have been given the picks for the keyhole. We'll be knowing that shit is ridiculous, dang Here is the secret hierarchy of angels. Deceased humans can become angels, but few humans do. Angels are immortal beings, but not all of them are former human souls. Some are animals, some plants, some outdated electronics. They are all named Erica, with a K. All angels are equal 
to all other angels. They share all memories and all physical sensations. They experience everything simultaneously. Their minds are overwhelmed with enlightenment and pain. They have no centralized leadership, but they do have committees. Lots of committees. These committees do not have titles nor objectives. The committees simply emerge as needed. Angels are wealthy, but do not understand currency. They will often ask to borrow 10 bucks. Angels have no bodies, only visual projections of winged, barely humanoid forms. These forms are dreamed up by those who see and acknowledge them, and may vary based on the viewer. The secret hierarchy of angels is an ethereal mass of feelings and thoughts made manifest by necessity. They are only individual beings because we imagine them so, but they are, collectively, beings. It is illegal to speak of or acknowledge in any way the secret hierarchy of angels. But I will acknowledge it. Here, on the radio, I am an objective journalist, which does not mean I have no morals or opinions, just that I can be self-aware of my biases and emotions, yet still report a story transparently to you. You may not agree with my point of view, but I will do my best to give you the information you need to decide that on your own. In the case of the angels, I acknowledge them. I see them. And because Josie always said such, I too believe that they are real beings and are entitled to Josie's estate. So does five-headed dragon Miriam Edelman. She's a lawyer, and the angels hired her to represent their case for management of Josie's will. Oh, the dragons did not do any harm to those in traffic today. They were simply the legal team coming to help facilitate Josie's final wish, which was to build a Night Vale sculpture garden, complete with the usual roller coasters and tilt-a-whirls and an enormous Ferris wheel. Josie wanted to have her ashes scattered underneath Giacomo Manzu's famous sculpture, Top Thrill Dragster, which has a 400-foot drop and reaches over 120 miles per hour. Edelman and her legal team managed to push through the sculpture garden construction, which is now complete, and Josie's ashes have finally been honored in the way she wanted. Alondra seeded this ground because she understood how important this town was to Josie. But she added, my mother's home, her belongings, her money, her legacy, these are all I have of my family. I have no siblings, no cousins, and no parents. I am the only Ortiz left. I do not know or understand Night Vale, Alondra said. I do not believe in angels, nor dragons for that matter. I just want what is left of my mother's memory, and then I want to go home, wherever that is. The city has declined to hear further arguments about estate ownership from Edelman or her angel clients, as the dragons are not licensed to practice law anywhere on this earth, and their clients, the angels, don't legally exist. The secret hierarchy of angels is a cloud of knowledge formed from the collected experiences of the deceased. Josie might be among them now, or she might not. All I know is that Josie loved Night Vale and we loved her. I am going to go to the sculpture garden today to pay my respects. Carlos and I will hold hands and lay flowers at the ash-strewn base of Manzu's towering masterpiece of contemporary sculpture. And then we will purchase a souvenir photo of ourselves screaming in joy and sorrow while engaged in a 120 mile per hour freefall, demonstrating our fervent arts advocacy exactly as Josie would have wanted. I hope all of you will join me in honoring not only the life of Josefina Ortiz, but the lives of the angels who loved her too. Stay tuned next for hosts Josh and Chuck and their wildly popular show, Stuff You Shouldn't Know, 
which as usual will be an unbroken redaction beep for 30 straight minutes. No one has ever heard Josh or Chuck speak. And as always, good night, Night Vale. Josie was beautiful, and angels are real. Good night. Welcome to Night Vale is a production of Night Vale Presents. It is written by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner and produced by Joseph Fink. The voice of Night Vale is Cecil Baldwin. The voice of Steve Carlsberg was Hal Lublin. Original music by Disparition. All of it can be found at disparition.info or at disparition.bandcamp.com. This episode's weather was qualified by Samus. Find out more at samusmusic.bandcamp.com. That's S-A-M-M-U-S. Comments, questions, email us at info at welcome to nightvale.com or follow us on Twitter at Night vale Radio or just try to get a hold of your life for a second. Check out welcometonightvale.com for more information on this show and to pre-order our new Welcome to Night vale novel. Oh my God, we wrote another novel. And while you're there, consider clicking the donate link. It's the future that liberals want. Today's proverb, a million dollars isn't a sandwich. You know what's a sandwich? A taco. I love my country, by which I mean I am indebted joyfully to all the people throughout its history who have fought the government to make right where so many cunning sons and daughters, our foremothers and forefathers, came singing through slaughter, came through hell and high water, so that we could stand here and behold breathlessly the sight. How a raging river of tears cut a grand canyon of light. Ani DeFranco wrote that. I'm at the Grand Canyon. It's colder than I thought it would be. In my head, it was the desert, I guess, but I'm at the north side of it. It's high up in the mountains. There are trees, evergreen firs and spruces, lots of trees, bitter cold and thin air. It hurts a little to breathe, and every time I do, the breath comes out visible. It's off season, I think, or maybe not many people come to this part of the canyon. A great acreage of sheer nothing. A vast quantity of air. If we are a country made up more of distance than culture, then no wonder this is our most defining sight. We come to see the beating heart at the center of America, and it is a hole in the earth. And then we take a picture of it, so that we can own a little bit of that distance. Because that's all we want, really. I know I've gone silent since Seattle, and I'm sorry. It's just now that I know they're listening, which I should have known. I always should have known that. But I thought maybe history didn't apply to me. That's what it was. I I thought that all of history didn't apply to me. But history comes for us all eventually. I haven't been talking into the radio much. I've still been talking. The rhythm of my own voice, it's soothing. But I've left the radio off. Left my words unrecorded. Let every statement dissipate as it comes out of my mouth. Like the vapor of breath into a cold Grand Canyon sunrise. I've felt something following me since Montana. More dangerous than the Thistle Man. A more rational, more subtle kind of danger. I won't talk about that. I just wanted to get back on the radio and tell you about this view. It's beautiful, and I wanted to, in my way, share it with you. I love you, Alice. I don't forgive you, but I love you. Every time I breathe out, there's a little bit of that love in my exhalation. Traces of hormones, body chemicals, signals of love. 
carried out as frost steam from my lips out over the landscape. If I lived long enough, I could fill this whole canyon, one pump of my lungs at a time. But I won't live long enough. No one does, really. Hmm. So that we could stand here and behold breathlessly the sight. How a raging river of tears is cutting a grand canyon of light. Alice Isn't Dead Part 2 Every other Tuesday starting April 4th.